Oh my word, how beautiful. Now we're heading into the town of Niobrara. The good life. There's no way that people think of Nebraska think of this. You get on like you've done it before. Going back to the barn. This is incredibly high right now. All the ripples and the sandbars. You ready to get in? Yeah, let's do it. I'm thinking I'm in love. So we're leaving the farmlands of South Dakota to head to your home state again, Patrice. The good life. So this is the Chief Standing Bear Memorial Bridge over the Missouri River. Oh, look wow. at that. Oh, my word, how beautiful. No way. Look how high we are. Oh, what a view. Oh, wow. Did you know that Chief Standing Bear was a member of the Ponca tribe who lobbied for civil rights on behalf of the Native American people in the 1800s? Really? Yeah. The last time we crossed the Missouri River was down in Nebraska City. Now we're heading into the town of Niobrara. And Niobrara sits on a real shallow river, much like the Platte River. And the Sioux saw the Platte River for the first time and remarked about how shallow it was. And that's how this land got its name, Nebraska, meaning shallow waters. Really interesting, great stuff. I said it last year and I say it every time we come back. I love coming back to Nebraska and I love showing people that it's not what they think it is. So this is the Outlaw Trail Scenic Byway that runs from South Sioux City, Iowa to Valentine, Nebraska, all at the top of the state. If I was an outlaw, I would come down here. You can hide out in the bluffs. I heard Jesse James and his gang hit out here, and that's why they call it the Outlaw Trail. They're crossing the bridge, and you're looking at people either fishing, and we saw a whole group of ladies floating down on a big raft. I was like, you know, I can join them. It was a pretty hot day coming over. So we headed over to our campsite. All right, your next right-hand turn is Niobrara State Park. We came across Highway 14 out of South Dakota, headed west on the Outlaw Trail Scenic Byway, right into Niobrara State Park. Once we settled into our campsite, we headed up to the bluff for sunset and met Superintendent Kogan Thompson. We're in Niobrara State Park in the northeast region of the state parks in Nebraska. The park stands at about 1,300 acres. In the park, we got a swimming pool, trail rides, 80 electric campsites, 20 cabins. The park actually borders the Niobrara River on the east side and the Missouri to the north. One of the best things about the cabins, a lot of our cabins on the north slope, you get a great view of the river coming off those bluffs right there. The lodge has one of the best notorious spots for sunsets. It's incredible up there. That's my favorite spot in the park. Sunrise up on the three mile loop is also a very good spot. But that's kind of one of my favorite things is stop every once in a while and like look around and really don't take it for granted when you're driving around. Like look at the views, look at the wildlife and it really puts in perspective of how awesome, you know, working for the game in parks is. Feels good to be walking uphill. Well, after the drive in today, just like we do every trip, first night, we gotta go check out the sunset. We try to get to the sunset. Sometimes it works, Mother Nature sets up. Like right now, she's looking good. Ranger Kogan shared with us his favorite place for sunsets. Well, I don't think there's a bad sunset <laughs> here in the park, quite honestly. I agree. There's no way that people think of Nebraska and think of this. Oh. 150 foot bluffs up off the Missouri River to our right here. Yeah. So we headed up a trail and it was real manicured, real tall grass on each side. The wind was blowing, it was fantastic. We're at the confluence of both of the rivers. The sun is setting, clouds are coming over and the breeze is phenomenal. Now we've done the Northwest in Shadron, now the Northeast in Niobrara and I am learning a whole lot more about the beauty of my home state. Girl, when you sip that wine with those cherry lips that I want all night. Mm, makes everything feel right. Ooh, look at you tonight. 
if you don't come to celebrate the sunset and you stay back at camp, this is what you miss. Especially in a place like Nyabrera, this is gorgeous. The end of another day, another great day. Day two arrived, we woke up early to watch the sunrise, and Patrice had something planned I had no idea what to expect. Oh, look. Yeah, it's coming up. The start of a new day. We saw the ending, now we're seeing the beginning. You're usually the one who's planning all the special things. My turn, I've got something special planned for you. I'm looking forward to it. You got your cowboy hat on, so something is up. Sunrise was absolutely spectacular, and then I heard something coming over the ridge, and it was a team of horses. I had been planning this since I knew we were coming to Nyabrera. I was waiting for this moment, and when they started coming up over the hill, I got really excited. I know you've never been on horseback, so <laughs> what a better place to do it. Oh my gorgeous. God, look at them all. We had Superintendent Kogan and the Wranglers here at Niobrara State Park bringing up all the horses for us. This guy has never been on a horse, and it was time. Very nice. You get on like you've done it before. Yeah. I'm a rodeo clown. <laughs> there you go, cowgirl. Looks good on you up there. It's God's country. This is the perfect spot for a vacation. Giddy up! We should hit the outlaw trail. It'll be a couple outlaws. I'm with the Cocoa Beach kid. You Jesse James? <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking I'm in love. Look at that view. Going back to the barn. some venison chili. I wanted to invite Superintendent Kogan and some local people out for dinner, share with them some food because they've shared their beautiful home with us. We had a couple members of the Ponca tribe and a local historian. Oh, what a treat. Aonia, welcome to our home here in Nebraska. When Lewis and Clark came through here, our great-great-grandfather was Little Bear, was the chief. And they came in and they took us to Oklahoma and created our Trail of Tears, I guess. Every tribe has their Trail of Tears. And Standing Bear was down, his son passed away. So he promised he would bring him back home and bury him. So they came back and then he was arrested and you know the trial. But Standing Bear did do a good thing for all natives like Martin Luther King. This is our homeland. This is where we started. The native people moved into this area because it was a place that there was safety. You're down here in the valley, away from the prevailing winds. There was plenty of wildlife and food, fishing, water. We're content with the fact that we're able to enjoy the natural beauty. Everybody knows everybody. We're all family in some shape or form. And the fact that there's so much history of the area that is a way of life that is simplistic, that you don't really need to have a lot. You'll never get rich, but it doesn't really matter. You're very wealthy because of the fact that you have what you have. It was a wonderful time listening to all of the stories, eating Patrice's food. She cooks the best food of venison, chili. It was delicious, and what a great way to end the evening. It was an honor to feed everyone. I love to share food, I love to break bread, and especially having Larry from the Ponca Tribe do a blessing. We made a spirit plate. To remember to preserve, restore, instead of just taking and destroying. For without Mother Earth, there is no life. Oh ho, day wonga. What an incredible evening, I will never forget that.
Day three, we woke up, jumped in the toad, drove west about two hours to Smith Falls State Park. We had been hearing about people floating down the Niobrara, the falls that are there. We had to go check it out. Another beautiful day in Nebraska. I'm looking forward to this. Are we going in? I'm not sure. We'll see when we get up there. What do you think? Well, we brought our shorts and towels just in case. It's a 250-acre park. It's a small park, all about the river, and I can see why. We get there and we get to meet Superintendent Amy. Hey, welcome. Hey there. Thanks for having hey. us. She got to tell us all about the park. We're here at Smith Falls State Park. And I've been park superintendent here since 2018. Our main attraction is Smith Falls, which is known as Nebraska's tallest waterfall. It's about 63 feet tall. Smith Falls State Park was named for the Smith family, who was the first to homestead this area in the late 1800s. Small park, but very unique in the way that it is still privately owned and it is leased to the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. And the Niobrara River cuts right through the middle of our park and folks come here to enjoy floating the river, including tubing, kayaking, just spending time with each other and in nature. I like to call Smith Falls the Grand Central Station of the Niobrara River. This is the place where people meet up and stop and enjoy lunch and just enjoy the area here. Personally, I feel like people come here to experience the peace of nature and all its glory and all its beauty. And people come here to relax, to enjoy it, to enjoy each other, to spend time in a place that is as it's always been. Amy said it was only a half mile hike out to the waterfall, so it shouldn't take us too long. Ah, I'm looking forward to it. Hey, Kev, you forgot your gloves this oh, morning. That's right, okay. In 2010, I was diagnosed with leukemia. Doctor's orders were to stay out of the sun and cover up. So I wear gloves and a buff whenever I'm out of the sun. And I tell you what, I'm a big outdoors person, so covering up is one of my biggest priorities. All right, you ready? I am, let's go. The Verdigree Bridge. These little day trips out from camp just keep me happy. Uh, so. That sandbar down there in this area, when you're on a tube or a kayak, you can stop there and they've got a trail up to the waterfall. And are we going up to the waterfall? Yeah, we're going. Let's do it. I'm working up a nice sweat and ready to cool off. Oh, you can wow. smell it now. Look at this, Patrice. Oh, feel the breeze. Oh, it feels so good. Oh, it's beautiful. How cool is it that they lease it to the Nebraska Game and Park so we can all enjoy it? I'm ready to enjoy it. You ready to get in? Yeah, let's do it. It was so refreshing. I mean, yes, it was cold, but it, it was a one-of-a-kind experience. It was invigorating. I just had such a great time. Just the look on your face, it was almost as if you were getting recharged, re-energized, every drop that was dropping on you. You were almost becoming a superhero. We've been following the Niobrara River all through northern Nebraska. I had one more stop, and it was called the Cowboy Trail. Wow, this is incredibly high right now. Yeah. This used to be a railroad bridge. Yeah, the Chicago and Northern Railways gifted this to the state of Nebraska in 1993, and it's now a bike, hike, and horseback trail. Look at this overlook, right in the middle of this bridge. Oh, you can see the riverbed. I mean, just the, all the ripples and the sandbars. I see another bridge over there. The Niobrara has 221 bridges that span it. And you can go from Norfolk, Nebraska, 321 miles all the way up to Shadron. I think we might need to try that too. The thing I've loved the most about this week is all the history that we've got to experience and witness, not just learn about it in a book. We've been here. 
This is only the end of day three. We still have tomorrow. Are you ready to ride? I'm ready to roll. Woke up on day four, loaded up the RV, and headed to Pender, Nebraska to check out where Blue Ox is made. Having a towed vehicle this year has been a game changer. And then when I found out Blue Ox was made in Nebraska, it was on the list. We get here to Blue Ox and we meet president of the company, Mike Hesse. He got to tell us all about the company. This facility started up 97 years ago with my great grandfather, Raleigh McQuishan. In the 80s, my father, Jay Hesse, took over. He kind of expanded us into RV towing. And then in the early 90s, he bought a little company from California called Blue Ox. We were trying to make our products the highest quality out there. Having the robotics to really accent our strong workforce just gives us the best product in the marketplace. We have so many exciting new products that are expanding us in such a major way. And it's just doing that little extra for the customer is what really propels us and sets us apart from the competition. We want to make the journey as great as the destination. Regardless of the weather conditions, that customer can get to that destination with confidence. That's what Blue Ox is. Getting to meet Mike Hesse, the fourth generation of this company, he's got a lot of passion for this company, his employees, and his product. We got to go into the factory with Ronnie. I love finding out where our products come from. This is our new fifth wheel hitch. That's up and coming. Yeah. Very excited about that. It was our first step into the robotic scene. All it's doing is grabbing boxes, palletizing boxes. If you can hand weld five base plates in an hour, it makes more sense to keep those guys. Yeah. It's always that mix of, you can't be fully robotic because it doesn't make sense. We're standing right now in our tow bar line. Every tow bar we manufacture is gonna come down this line right here. On this particular one here, yeah. we'll run 220 a day in the shift. It's a true American company grown right here in Nebraska. What these are producing are the spring bars on our weight distribution hitches that go on our Track Pro and Sway Pro. You have 10 hours of unmanned, zero human intervention. It just goes. The main reason we're really going after this right now is to control our own destiny. Being reliant on somebody overseas wasn't an option anymore. So what this is is a tube laser. You can take anything that is square or round or an angle. You can punch these holes in as you see them. Just like our tube laser is a BLM flat laser, right? So instead of tube, it's gonna be a sheet, right? So any flat product is gonna be cut on here. We can program this on a Friday night, come in Monday morning, and we'll have sheets stacked up in the tower there. In one word, out of all of this is efficiency. Obsessed with it, unfortunately. <laughs> the complex. <laughs> What better way to end our day four out here in Nebraska? I've enjoyed every bit of it. What was your favorite park this week? If I have to choose, it's Niobrara State Park. From the beautiful sunrises to sunsets on that vista, looking over the rivers, the bluffs, the uh, horseback, uh, all of it. Niobrara State Park for me. It's beautiful here in Niobrara. What was your favorite part? Well, my first horseback ride will definitely go down in history. I will not ever forget that. But I'll tell you what, that waterfall for me, standing in that waterfall was a moment that I will never forget. And even riding our bikes across the cowboy trail, this was a really big trip and I enjoyed every bit. I can't wait to come back to Nebraska. Certainly our next trip, we can plan it right now, I'm ready. The booty is a little sore already, but that's okay. In the last couple of years, we've been coming back to my home state, exploring in our RV, and Nebraska Game and Parks hits a home run every time.